So last week we took a look at two argument essays about this same topic. We wrote an outline for each essay, and then we turn the outlines into an argument structure. Uh, so this is what we came up with last week. On the left, this is essay one. On the right, this is essay two. And your homework was to go home and to see if any point in one essay is responding to a point in the other essay. So let's take a look from first from left to right. Are there any points in the first essay that are responding to some point in the second essay? Tambori. Taima. Oh, my daughter could be told you. I mean, I. Now, I'm on sign. Go on. Don't eating. Hi. So, uh, do you see any point that from the left that might be responding to a point on the right? So, for example, the first argument is there are more traffic accidents when the legal age is lowered. Is there any point on the right that could be subject to this attack? Uh, maybe the first point, right? Adulthood should be the same age. Uh, and so this author would say, no, it should not be the same age because when you lower the drinking age, uh, there are more traffic accidents. Right? That could be one response. Uh, it could also be responding to the third point on the right. When the author on the right says the higher age limit doesn't work, the author on the left can say, oh, it does work because if you lower the age limit, there are more traffic accidents. Something like that. Um, does the second point respond to anything? Need to have somebody supervise? I don't think so, right? Hmm. What about the third point? There is no need to lower the drinking age. Also doesn't seem to be responding to any point. Let's flip the directions. Are there any points on the right that are responding to points on the left? Are you here? No, 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 Uh, okay, so you're talking about 1B, slippery slope. This is the idea that if we give them an inch, they'll take a mile. It's like a slope. Right? So argument uh, on the right, argument one is saying that uh, the legal age for everything should be the same. First of all, because uh, of the principle of freedom. Secondly, because According to that author, if we set a different legal age for drinking, then we might start setting different legal ages for everything. Do you think this argument is responding to anything on the left? Point three, no need. So there so uh, when the author on the left says there's no need to uh, lower the drinking age. The author on the right says, no, there you, we should because of these two reasons. Yeah, yeah, good. I think that makes sense. Um, 
what about arguments two to four? Are they responding to anything? Like maybe point two. Argument two is saying that uh, because the current drinking age is 21, so 18, 19, and 20 year olds have a secret drinking culture. Maybe this is responding to point two on the left. Point two is saying uh, if we lower the drinking age to 18, we need somebody to supervise these college students. But then the author on the right is saying it's already happening. So that's not a good argument. OK. Um, what about point three? The age limit doesn't work. Uh, it could be responding to argument three on the left. When the author on the left says there's no need to lower the drinking age, the author on the right says, but keeping it at 21 doesn't prevent illegal drinking. So in order to save lives, we could lower the drinking age. As for argument four, the nasty argument style, I don't think it's responding to any point on the left. From this exercise, we can see that even though both essays are about the same topic, not every point matches. Depending on your position and which of your own arguments are strongest, you will be presenting your ideas in a different order, in a different emphasis, or maybe even presenting different ideas. Um, so just because you're talking about the same issue from two sides does not mean that all of your ideas will uh, match. Um, and this is useful to think about when you're writing your argument essay and you have to respond to the other side. You have to imagine what would the other side be thinking? Why would they think this way? And you have to find a way to respond to every likely idea that they might present. The structure of those responses, as you can see, may not match the structure of your own essay. So you have to think about how do you put those responses into your essay? Maybe you have to rewrite some of your essay to include those responses. So please keep that in mind as you write. OK, and that concludes the extremely long introduction to argument essays. We spent uh, two and two weeks and 10 minutes. Do you have questions? I'll try to plan my time better next year. Um, so I over the past two weeks, I discovered another interesting argument related essay that I put on Moodle for your reference. At the bottom of this unit, I previously talked about the first two essays. The third one, I think, gives good examples of how to rebut or respond to an argument essay. This essay is uh, an activist for trans rights who is responding to some of the transphobic claims in uh, an essay written by J.K. Rowling. Now, I say that this is an example of rebuttals because this piece is not an argument essay. It does not have a beginning, middle, and end. It does not have a clear structure. What it does is it takes some of the important points from Rowling's essay and responds one by one. So the first point, she says this, but it's wrong because of this. Second point, she says this, but it's wrong because of this. Um, so itself is not an argument essay, but it's a good example of many different ways to give rebuttals and real world responses. Uh, and if you're interested in reading that, you can refer to page five of your handout as you read. Uh, the fourth slide uh, gives you the four possible ways to provide a rebuttal, and you can think about which kind of rebuttal the author is using for each point. OK, now let's begin the first individual conference on argument topics.